Hey friends, today I'm going to be showing you how I make a delicious, yummy, vegan, I think, I guess it is vegan. Yes, it's vegan soup. Um, I discovered this recipe about a month ago and I, I, I literally make it about twice a week. Everyone in the family loves it. Kate doesn't love it, but Brooklyn loves it. Paul loves it. I love it. It's super filling. It's so yummy and pretty simple. doesn't take a whole long time to cook. So I've got the ingredients over here. I'm going to show you how I cook it. Okay, so this is all you need. You need um, a bunch or a bag of asparagus. I try and get organic when I can, but I did Instacart and they sent me this. I don't think this is organic. Then I get organic uh, zucchini squash and you can do just zucchini squash or you can just do yellow squash. I do um, both when I can. You need a full onion, a um, carton of vegetable broth. I like to do the low sodium. You need fresh rosemary. This seriously is so important. Do not skip this stuff. It makes all the difference. And then salt and pepper. And that is all you need. Okay, so first you wanna chop all of the veggies. You're gonna start by uh, sauteing the onion first. So I always start by cutting the onion first and you wanna cut it, you know, it honestly doesn't matter how small pieces you put cut it because you're gonna put it all into a blender anyway. But I do like to kind of cut them in smaller pieces. I feel like they just cook a little bit um, more evenly that way. And I'm gonna cut this whole onion up. You really can honestly do however much you like. I find the more onion you have, the better flavor. And this wasn't too large of an onion, so I, I think that one full onion is gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna chop this up. Then you're going to spray a big pan with olive oil and you're just gonna cook the onions for a few minutes. And so while those cook, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna chop up the other veggies. I'm gonna chop up the squash and I'm gonna chop up the asparagus. I like to put them all into a big bowl just so I can use one cutting board and I don't have to make a big mess. So this is about the size that I try and cut the squash just because it cooks a little quicker. I try and cut it in, um, in this size here. I'm gonna, I let the onions cook till they get a little brown. You don't want them to be too overcooked, but I would say like maybe three to four minutes. And then what you're gonna do is, I like to keep it on medium. So I have my heat set on medium. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pour all the veggies in there. Now, then you're going to take your full carton of vegetable stock and you're going to pull this whole thing inside in the pan. So I usually do a whole carton. If I feel like I need more, I'll grab another carton and pour maybe like a quarter or half. I'll show you. Basically, you want to make sure that all that there's enough broth in there to fully cover the vegetables. Just enough so that there's enough to lightly cover the vegetables. This is probably going to be just the right amount. Okay, so this is about one carton, which is actually perfect. You just wanna make sure that the broth comes to the top and that all the vegetables can be submerged here. You're gonna let this boil and then cook for about 10 or 15 minutes. You'll know once you see the squash is soft and the asparagus is soft, and then it'll be done cooking. This is also a great time to season it, so I'm gonna take some salt and pepper and season it while it is cooking. Okay, I do like to go a little light with my seasoning at this stage because you, you are gonna have time to season it later when you blend everything together. You can taste it and actually see how much you want or need, and then you can add more before you blend it. So I just do a little bit, um, and then I'm gonna turn the heat back up to medium and let this cook. It smells so good. So it has been cooking for, I would say about 10 minutes. The squash still feels a little hard, so I'm gonna let it cook a little longer. You can, you'll be able to tell when it's ready because the squash will be um, much, much softer and kind of almost transparent looking. Uh, and then I wanna share with you guys my blender. I've had this for years, but I've never used it so much until recently. It's the Vitamix blender. Paul got this for Christmas years ago and it's pretty expensive. Um, I would say the last, three months, I, I use this at least twice a day, at least every day, sometimes two to three times a day. Cause I'll make uh, smoothies for like breakfast or lunch. And then I've been making soups. Um, and then sometimes the girls will make smoothies. So I use it a ton. So I wanted to share that. Uh, once the soup is done, like once it gets a good, you know, maybe, maybe another five more minutes, I'll turn the heat off and I'm actually going to let it sit for a few minutes. So it cools down a little bit. I don't want it to be piping hot. Um, so you can actually kind of turn the heat off and even though the heat won't be on, it'll still be cooking, obviously, because you know the vegetable stock is really hot and boiling. Uh, after it's had time to cool, then I'm gonna pour this into the blender and blend it up. But 
I will be back to share that with you guys in a second. I think I'm gonna turn this off in a minute and just let it sit for a few minutes. In other news, I wanted to share a fun little <laughs> snack. I haven't tried it yet. This was recommended in the book that I'm reading as a little quick like energy pick-me-up snack. It is bee pollen, which I've never ever had bee pollen before. It just arrived at the door, so I thought I would share it. Has anyone ever had bee pollen before? It's like dry little, little pellets. <laughs> and then I think a tablespoon of coconut oil. So you get a, you get the bee pollen and then you drizzle the coconut oil over. Maybe it's not a tablespoon, but anyway, you drizzle the coconut oil over the bee pollen and then you eat it. So I will have to keep you posted on that, but I wanted to share that because I don't know, it's kind of cool. I always recruit Paul for this part because it makes me nervous pouring all that hot stuff in a big pan into the blender. Okay. Well, this was a little bit of a failure, but now that everything's in the blender, I'm gonna add salt and pepper. And then I take like one, what is this called? A sprig of rosemary. And I take most of the little leaves off and I will put all of these into the blender. And I'm gonna salt and pepper it. And then I'm gonna blend this up and then I'll taste it and I'll see if it needs rosemary. Do not skip the rosemary. It adds all the flavor, trust me. Uh, one thing I wanna add, because I didn't share this in the beginning of the video, but the original recipe does say you can drizzle sunflower oil over the soup when it's finished. I've never done that before. I just purchased this this week at Trader Joe's, organic toasted sunflower oil. So I am gonna try that today, but it'll be the first time that I've ever um, added it to the soup. So we're gonna go ahead and blend this up, see how it tastes, and then maybe we'll be done. Maybe we'll add a little more seasoning okay so i'm gonna take a little taste and it needs more more rosemary and more salt and pepper so i'm gonna add a little more i added quite a bit more rosemary pretty much doubled what i had added before and quite a bit of salt i feel like it needs a little more I feel like it needs just a little more. Okay, so it is done. This is what the consistency looks like. So it's pretty thick. It's almost creamy, even though there's no cream used. It's really, really good. So I'm gonna pour this in a bowl. I'm gonna drizzle it with a little bit of that sunflower oil and we're gonna give it a try. All right, so let's try this. I added a little salt and pepper to my bowl too. So good. It is so good. It's very filling. Because it's a pretty light soup, it'll fill you up quickly. But I would say after like two hours, you kind of feel like you need a little something extra. So usually what I'll do is I'll eat something along with the soup. I'll bake a sweet potato and I'll have that or have a piece of toast. Um, maybe I'll have some avocado afterwards, something to add and make this a little bit more of a, sust a substantial meal. Um, and usually that entire blender will serve our family of four, well, three, because Kate doesn't really eat it. And then I'll have enough for leftovers the next day or two for lunch. So it is so, so yummy. I'll leave the ingredients and recipe in the description box below. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you liked this and you want more um, like healthy recipes that I've been cooking, let me know in the comment section below. So good. Uh-oh.